Welcome back, everybody, to the Jim Feist Pro Football Handicapping Show here at Dom DeMarco's on the patio, where the food is beyond fantastic. I know you love the food. Oh. Ray, you love the food. Everybody loves the food at Dom DeMarco's. Here's what I'll say about the food here at Dom DeMarco's, and I'll bet both you guys will agree with me. Have you ever heard anybody say a bad thing about the food at Dom DeMarco's? No. Yes. You yes. have? Yes. What? I have to. I can't stop eating it, and I'm gaining weight. <laughs> okay, that's a good. Right, but the food's good. I've never heard a bad thing about the food's it, not good. It's here. absolutely incredible. I love this. They have this sausage plate. Well, it started out the sausage with pepper with the uh, peppers, and now they added the sausage, and they put pasta with it. Those bow tie pasta things. It's, it's incredible. I love that. And the pizza is amazing, of course. It is. What do you? Yeah, like? it's absolutely amazing. I mean, I like coming here just for the atmosphere and the people. It's a different type of crowd than the, than the usual Vegas crowd. It kind of reminds me of East Coast, home Midwest stuff like that. It's a good crowd too. Every, I'm Tommy Canelli. This is Jim Feist, and Ray Lamarck is back with us here on a special Monday show. We will be going back to Thursday, starting December 5th again. Every Thursday from there, we'll talk Thanksgiving games. But let me, Jim, let me ask you this. I know you had a good week, but Washington's lost three in a row. What's going on with Jaden Daniels and the co and the Commanders? Well, first of all, there's a lot of film on him. Number one, uh, and in, the, in college they don't play this type. Of, I mean, they're playing against people that are really, really good. The coaches are really, really good. The players they're playing against are really, really good. They make adjustments, and you're you're bound to make adjustments. And he's a kid, and he's got to learn different things that he knew when he came in. I mean, he's naturally talented. And he's If he stays healthy, he's going to have a tremendous career. But not everybody's going to let you just run over them like this. You know, so they're going to make adjustments. They're going to slow him down. And they've done so. And, and he's facing regression. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a long season. They play a lot of games, a lot more games than they play in college. And uh, they figured him out a little bit. Let me ask you this. Is it a regression from Jaden Daniels, or is it part of it fall on the coaching staff for not doing something to make some adjustments? Well, his offensive coordinator um, has a history of falling down in the second half of seasons. If you go back to his college days, back in Arizona when he was the head coach, somehow they figure him out. They figure out what he's doing, and they make adjustments. It's, it, these people are all paid to keep their they want to keep their jobs they have families to feed they see what he's doing they're going to make adjustments and they, and they have ray what do you think about i think uh you know Jaden daniels to me like i said before and i'll continue to say it um is next level um he is a running quarterback that is throw first on the run i can't remember when I've seen that before. Um, it, it's amazing. Just like when Lamar came out, but just like when any of all the new quarterbacks that could run come out in the division, it takes time to get adjusted to it. There's a lot of tape on it, like Jim said. They got it. They, they're seeing what's going on. A lot of it is on the coaching. But you know what? He's going to be all right. It's going to be a great division. It's going to yeah, be good. Yeah, I mean, there's injuries, of course, offensive line injuries, if you don't give them time. I mean, we watched the game last night. Stafford's a great coach or quarterback, but if you if you have an offensive line that can't keep them standing up straight, oh. I mean you can't throw the ball. Yeah, the first check you write is, is is for the mortgage. The second check you write is for the insurance, as you learned very well this weekend, my man. Well, I did, but you got to invest in a line. Of course. So the, yes. So with that being said, with them losing three in a row, it's surprising to me that they're giving eight to Tennessee this weekend. Is that too many? Yes, I think it's too many, especially. You know, I, I don't know. I don't, we don't know what to think about Levis, but he was a turnover machine. He has a lot of talent. And if you can, if you can keep him up straight and, and keep him from throwing the ball to the other team all the time, they can play. Yeah. Yeah, eight points. No, eight points is way too many. You way, agree, too right? way too many for this game. I mean, it could happen, and you wouldn't be shocked. You wouldn't raise your eyebrows if it did, but it's too high. It's actually two, it's five and a half. Will Levis is it's like actually, down to five and a half. It's actually five and a half. Now. We saw the flashes of brilliance. Okay, flashes, and uh, it could happen. Uh, it's a, it's a, Tennessee right now is a very Baker Mayfield, Cleveland Browns esque type late in the season football team that can 
hurt you on accident. Speaking of Baker Mayfield, <laughs> he's the he, he's the most valuable player in the league. This kid. Yeah. I mean, he. You ain't gonna argue about me he, as a Tampa He couldn't Bay play fan. in Cleveland. Of course, <laughs> nobody can play in Cleveland. You know, right. it's, a, it's a mess there. He goes to the Rams for a couple of games. He plays pretty good out there. Nice play. And he is a warrior. I've said this. I mean, this guy is a warrior. I've said this a couple times on this show. It seems like he's grown up. He's passed the money part and being the name and doing all these commercials. And now it seems to me like he wants to prove himself that he could, he's a winner and he wants to win. He, I agree with you on Baker Mayfield. And I do agree with you on how Cleveland, I'm from Cleveland, in case everyone doesn't know, that destroys everyone's hopes and dreams and <laughs> quarterbacks and everything. However, <laughs> But that being said, there was a maturity issue with Baker Mayfield and he has outgrown that. But I do want to say this, and I have been beating this drum since I was in eighth grade. And I'm going to tell you right now why Cleveland keeps making the mistake. Okay. In order for you to be a quarterback in the AFC North, there's one golden rule. You have to be six foot one. I'm sorry, even the bums like Eli, whoever you want to, you have to be six foot one and you have to weigh at least 225 because you're going to get hit by Baltimore. You're going to get hit by Pittsburgh. You're going to, even in the NFC North, you've got to be a certain height. You can be a smaller quarterback, a more physical quarterback, and a running quarterback, Kyler Murray. You can go to Florida with that. You can go to Arizona with that. But in these top divisions with a lot of snow, I don't think Baker ever had a shot. Well, he he played his college ball in Oklahoma. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's not, the, not, that's not exactly pro proper. But in the, in the professional football league, in, in, in the National Football League, in the AFC North, in the winter, we've all seen this. Even look at the height of all the great quarterbacks that came out of the North, even the bad ones. You have to be able to see over the line. You can't be running around. He's a much better fit down there. There was a fit issue, but overall, I'm just glad for Baker and he has MVP status. Before we get into the turkey games, let's talk about the game tonight. Baltimore and the Chargers. We've talked about the Chargers making a move in the second half and possibly being a team of you got to take them serious. This is Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. This is a revenge game. What do you like tonight, if anything? I like the Chargers. I mean, I, it's it's. I, I took three. Um, this this is a revenge game. They played in the Super Bowl. They played brother against brother in the Super Bowl. Baltimore won that. John beat Jim. You know the, the sibling rivalry. You know Sounds that's like there. Documentary. You know, here, here's John what beat you have. You, you, the Chargers <laughs> actually have a little bit better record. They're a home dog. Baltimore's had to fly across the country. I, I, their defense is not as good as the Chargers' defense. You got two good quarterbacks. You got two good coaches. I don't get. I don't get the number. I don't know why they're favored. I think, if, if anything, it should be an even game. I, I'll tell you why I think it is. Sometimes brother rivalries, he may know something, how to, how to get under his skin, and figures he might be a great coach, but he's not against me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with Jim. Okay. Ray? If it's 24 to 20 in the fourth quarter, and Baltimore's down, there's two minutes and 16 seconds left on the clock. <laughs> what do you think they're going to win the football game? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the 216 and not just two minutes. Okay. The other 16 seconds makes a big difference. Is the, six, is the 16 seconds, is, the, is that the key? It must be yeah. the key. Just a little bit before that two minute warning because the Chargers are going to have Careful all their timeouts. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm, I'm Chargers are going to have all their timeouts. <laughs> You know they are. For two all the brothers there. are going to be fighting for their timeouts because you know at Thanksgiving that you're going to have all my timeouts. So. Yeah. <laughs> let's, throw, let's throw into the Thursday games. The Bears at Detroit. Uh, last time I saw it, it was at 10 or 10 and a half. Ray, do you like this or anything on this game or no? I'm Too just going to do, uh, you know what? Um, I'm just going to do, uh, have some fun and do the Thanksgiving American thing and do a, a three-team parlay on that one, money line, just for fun, you know? Uh, if I had to take it, I mean, I would give it up with Detroit on Thanksgiving. You have to, but I kind of like the uh, Green Bay, Detroit, Dallas three-team thing just to have some Well, I was just going to say, has anybody ever done in – Crack is here, and he may know. You guys have all been around this a lot of time. What the home teams are on Thanksgiving. I'm always curious what the home teams are on Thanksgiving. They seem to be the ones. Do you know, Crack? Are... They, they probably have a winning record of winning, but I don't can't tell you versus the spread. Versus That's spread. why the spread is there. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you, well, do you the, like this game? Yeah, actually, actually, I do. I like all three games. But, um, you know, the, the one thing, let's look at the Bears. We're going to analyze these things. Let's talk about them. Yep. 
The Bears changed offensive coordinators, and Williams actually looks a whole lot better than he did prior to the offensive coordinator change. I don't like the head coach Chicago has, and I think that will change uh, going forward. But Williams is a talented kid. He can throw, he can run, he's got all the tools. The Lions are like a freight train, and every time I step in front of them, I get crushed, which I did with the Colts this week. I thought, I shot, not sure, coming off the 50 burger that they had and the Colts sitting at home plus eight and all that, and, and no. Including the injuries that you tried No, no, it just, it just didn't work. This Lions team is, they're a freight train, so yeah. that's, this is the hard to stand in front of them. They find new ways to beat you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. <laughs> they're brutal. He had five, <laughs> Jared Goff had five interceptions. Not and this, they won. Not this no, week. No, week before they won. Yeah, they find right. new ways. It, it, it's, Against uh, Houston, yeah. I think in this game here, I mean, you know I hate big numbers as the NFL, but I just think that's going to be, they're just, the Lions are just, in every single position, better. Just, they just If they just run the ball, they can beat them. They can easily cover that if they just play conservative. The injuries are something to mount up, and at right. some point it's going to catch up. It's, it, with, but it does with every team. And, and But in this, in this spot, they're going to put it on a show. Yeah. Let's They're stay in the same show. conference and talk about Tua, who can't win in the cold going to Green Bay. It's going to be awful weather. It was awful weather in Cleveland last week. I mean, is there any reason why you don't take the Packers in this game? No. Or the under? Oh. Well, the weather's bad, and there's, there's, there's a crazy weather front coming through Canada, and it's coming right down through the – the Wisconsin area and uh, if that weather go I mean it's not gonna be I don't think it's gonna be 32 it's gonna be like zero or f at least feel that way the Dolphins are not, they're not used to that kind no. of weather and they're two has small hands he's never <laughs> played well on you know under 40 degrees your boy Baker's got small hands yeah but he's a warrior that he kid that warrior. kid is two and make it through the game yeah, Baker, Baker. Oh, don't say that I said that earlier I was asking if I should say that I don't want, I don't want him to get hurt for no. God's sake but you know he, he's got a lot of talent and everything but he does have a concussion problem I don't know it's kind of dangerous that he's even playing but um, no I, I there's no reason to bet not not no there's no reason to bet the ball I don't know why it's not five I don't know why it's not four it's, and a half. I don't know why it didn't open at four. Is it down to three? It is. Well, this this is the current line right here. What do you got, Greg? You got anything on this? No, nothing on that. No, I don't. Um, I, I just go back to what Jim was saying before about um, the weather on the Green Bay game. I just was looking up some things from some different people here. And um, they're saying it's kind of, I mean, it, it's hard to believe. Not only under 32. It's going to be close to zero with wind, wind chill condition, conditions here. I just was asking about that. Don't you so, hear that? You heard them both zero. hit the gas. <laughs> no, I'm not saying Miami has to. Miami needs the game more yeah. than Green Bay, much yeah. more. But I'm just saying I, I think laying a field goal is, 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 is – I've done it for a lot of money this morning and last night. I bet three games last night. I bet Seattle, pick them. I bet uh, Cincinnati minus two and a half, and I bet this game last night and today. Uh, Green Bay. The other game for Thursday. Somehow week. you and I are thinking the same way. I don't, really? We don't talk to each other all week or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're on the same wavelength. The other yeah. game on Thursday, Giants at the Cowboys. Last Tommy time. Cutlets? It's, at, it's up to four. I think it's gone from two to four last yeah. time I've looked. I, I don't know why it's not seven. I know that the Cowboys haven't won a damn thing, but... They should be in tanking mode, but then they're Cooper, not. Cooper Rush anytime touchdown <laughs> plus eight fifty. What's that say about the Giants? <laughs> the, oh, this yeah. is the one team in the league for sure that's yeah. tanking. They get rid of Jones. They don't go to their second quarterback. They go to their third quarterback. Maybe because Ma Mama makes food for all the all the players and she's a great cook. But that's this is a joke. This this is a joke. Really? Yeah, this is bad. Um, what's confusing to me is this number. Once again, why not five and a half? Why not six? Like, like, da like Dallas. This is uh, this is Dallas's spot. What's the what what's the team total on the Giants? I don't know what it is, but I, whatever it is, I bet it under. I don't know. I don't know where they're going to get ten from. I'll find out. It's got to be like 19, 18. Okay, well, there's no way they're going to get that many points. 
So let, let me go here then. Ray, you've been talking about this, your exact exacta for the Super Bowl. Yes. The Lions, Buffalo, you're on that, right? Well, here's what I figured out. Yeah, so the two exact is paid out like this. The one at Caesars was uh, Detroit to beat Buffalo paid 14 to one. Then Detroit to beat Kansas City paid 12 to one on the exactus. And uh, that looked pretty good, but then I found a better one, a little bit better, but ooh, a little bit better. Just the conference bets, Caesars has this. So instead of going that route, you can do Detroit to win the conference, and Kansas City to win the conference, just to meet each other. That paid about plus 608 this morning. And then Detroit to meet Buffalo played, paid uh, 712 this morning, each to win their conference respectfully. So. Well, let me, let me add a little something, or throw this into the, I personally believe the Lions and the Eagles are the two best NFC teams right now. And they could actually be the two best teams in football. This, this Philadelphia team is a little bit of a mystery. They don't score early, but when they wear you down with the physicality they have in that running game, they murder you in the second half. And you, by the way, are the person that brought that out last week to me in a private conversation we had. Look at what this team does to you, and so they wear you out. Physically, you're beat up playing this team. They may, may not score a lot in the first half, but they kill you in the second half. Well, that's if they get to the playoffs and it's Lions against Eagles, A, Crackman, what's the number? Well, first to go back, it's 16 and a half, the over-under on the Giants. And um, if it team was, total 16 and a half? 16 and a half is the total on, on that. I'm team. under on that. Yeah. The team total. And what was your next question, a line on? Lions against the Eagles in the playoffs, it's a championship game. That would be at the Lions. Yeah, Lions are, because that's, of, that's so, three points right there. That's three? three points. Okay. Yeah. So you think it's you no, think that, that's three just for the home field there. That, that, well, most people know. say home field's one and a half. Two I now. do, but that that's that's a don't uh, that's a tough place to play. It's a special game. Can you make it more than three? Is it more than three? Everybody grabs the Eagles. The spread itself. Yes. It might not. It, don't be surprised if that wasn't a hook on that. Three really, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Philadelphia is not. They're rolling along seven in a row. They're rolling along. And the, that physicality of that running game just wears the shit out of you. I'll always remember this team, though, for not having no heart. I, right. I, I just my, my brain can't get past the, <laughs> the Philadelphia teams in general. But uh, I know the Eagles have won championships. I know the Phillies have won and the Flyers and on and on. But um, then again, we could say the same thing about Detroit last year. What happened to them So uh, at the end? But that was the coach, that really the coach there. So um, three and a half, I, I'd be tempted... But I still probably wouldn't bet the Eagles. I'm not. Maybe I won't bet the game at all. Maybe I'll just be a fan of the game, which is hard to do, by the way, because I couldn't care. You cannot possibly go through a game without <laughs> yeah. betting it. Come no, on. no. Then, then, well, then, then, then you really don't know me. I, I, I have many games I don't I'm, bet. I'm, yeah. yeah, but that's an isolated championship game. I love betting, betting those type of games, though. I love yeah. situationally betting those. You gotta remember, games. it's the only game in town that day. Yeah, yeah, right. So but you I, like. Maybe even live wagering, though. I don't do oh, much live wagering, go. but live wagering during the playoff games, you know, the, the public just thinks automatically, oh, my God, I knew they were going to blow them away. That's normally why you should bet the other side, side. because you're getting taxed by betting that yeah. because our eyes play tricks on us. It's right in front of us, and you want to bet that side because you didn't get on it ahead of time, and damn it, let's let's lay an extra. Now you're going to pay tax on that side. I want the other side. I want the ugly team side anyway in the beginning with you say you like Philadelphia, Detroit, on the NFC. What about AFC? Which well, well, you I talk think, to? I think that, sh that barring barring injuries that are unforeseen now, I would say Philadelphia is going to meet meet uh, Detroit in the championship game for the NFC. What about AFC? The AFC is tougher because we have this team called Kansas City that doesn't seem to lose, but they don't look good winning. And so we, I don't, I just don't know if that's going to catch up to them. I mean, I love the coach. The defensive head coach is awesome. The quarterback is awesome. They got a lot of talent, and they keep winning. And they're, they're the two-time champions. They're going for a three-feet. But I'm going to tell you something. When you, they're, they're not playing all that well. They but didn't. they just keep winning. They barely covered. They didn't cover this weekend. No, they did not. And now they're what laying what 13, 14 with the Raiders this week. Well, the Raiders lost their quarterback, and they're going to another. I mean, the Raiders are a mess. Yeah, thirteen. Yeah, that's on Friday. Uh, at at some point, at 
at some point they're going to you would think they're going to wake up and actually play but i'm not laying 13 with is them. it for you afc is it kansas city and buffalo or is baltimore above them well let's not forget the chargers I, I think the chargers can make a late run i was talking about ray this before the show started i don't know if, you know the playoffs are going to start there's you got a lot of teams in the playoffs and the chargers could come out of that mess it's especially if Kansas City is not going to step up and play with the passion and intensity that we know they can, but they're they're not. And you know, sometimes sometimes you start reading your own press clippings and you actually think you're you're, you're better than you actually are. Yeah. And you know, all you have to do is sh- show up and walk on the field and you're going to win. I mean, they play that bad against the Panthers. Come on. You got to you got to play better than that. I'm not saying they should cover these big numbers, but at least be a little bit into what the hell you're doing. Ray, are you a believer in the Chiefs to get back to the Super Bowl? Or okay. You think they're not this, this year's not going to make it? I think it's going to come down to Kansas City and Buffalo, and I think that. With and the, right now, that game would be a Buffalo, right? Yeah, with that inconsistency, I don't care where it's at. With that inconsistency, the way the Chiefs are playing. Um, they have no identity on the offense. I mean, of course, they have Patrick Mahomes. Are they run first? Are they throw first? What are they? They're Patrick Mahomes first. And uh, I'm taking Buffalo right now, as of today, to meet Detroit. It, it or Philly in the Super Bowl. It yeah. would be a, make a difference if Pacheco was in the backfield and running the ball and being healthy. Because so they, it does balance things out a lot. And he's a physical runner. And it takes pressure off your quarterback. takes pressure off your offensive line. You're uh-huh. blocking techniques and everything everything yeah everything i mean the who the hell was it a couple of years ago said running backs are meaningless you don't have to pay them that's such bullshit well <laughs> it, it wasn't a throw first lead but yeah i understand let, let me it, it, come on we talked about buffalo let me go there because i was wanting to kind of lead this way because their next game is at home against the 49ers yeah. who are decimated by injuries and it is showing with the way that they're starting to play yeah, they might be decimated by attitude so they would. They had an off season where the, this, the these players want to be traded and they couldn't get contracts and and you know. What's that, that line? You can, get, you can get seven and a half on that now. Seven and a half on so, that now. So automatically, that's baked into the line. This line would have been three and a half, four. It's baked into the line. That this line is. I mean, there's no other way to bet in this game right now except for San Fran. Who's gonna? You can lay minus seven, but there's seven and a halfs out here. So. You know, so, Crack, are you saying because of the injuries that's made a three, three and a half point difference oh, yeah. in this game? Oh, yeah, of course. Purdy, especially. I mean, you know, um, listen, this game opened up six and a half and seven, quickly got bet up to minus seven, minus 20. Um, yet, yet there's one sports book, DraftKings, that has six and a half, minus six and a half, minus 20. So. Yeah. But the sharper sports books I follow, the offshore book, Pinnacle, Chris, and Circa are my three to go to okay. books. They're my they're my books that I I follow. Uh, for some reason, they just don't lose against people. So, um, yeah, Pinnacle does not have a line on this game, by the way. So they're Ray, you were asking about the total on this game. Yeah, it's forty six now. Uh, you know, here's the deal with San Francisco and what makes them so special. Nobody can run sideline to sideline. That's what makes them so freakishly great on the offense. And of course, we know their defense. Well, they're not able to do that now, so they're going to have to play West Coast, pound the ball up front, try to try to try. They're going to hold the ball. I mean, the under is the play. If you're going to touch this game right now, I mean, if you have to play a side, you're going to have to take the points. I mean, that's too many. You have to have. But the, if you have to choose one, it's a little low. I like that under. I like that under. That's a good number. Well, and, that's and, a good number. And, right? and they're desperate. They're I mean, desperate. the Niners are desperate. They're 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 actually. Right. What's the price on the Niners not making the playoffs? Mm. Probably like Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh's schedule is brutal coming down. Brutal. Right? I just, I, it's funny you say that. The only bet I bet now is is, is against Pittsburgh. They, their schedule is brutal. It's it's brutal. brutal. It really Absolutely is. Absolutely brutal. There's only a couple. You know, unfortunately, living in Vegas, we don't have those other sites like DraftKings, FanDuel. But if you're allowed to play on ESPN, there's a great bet on, on, on this, too. But... Um, we only have two sites. We have BetMGM and we have William Hill, which does futures. And every single week, and I say futures, every single week after the games are over, they put every single team up again. The yeah. wins, the over-under on the wins. So this morning I went 
Uh, I went under ten and a half. I took a dollar forty-five on Pitt. On Pitt. Oh on yeah. Pitt. I took a dollar forty-five. You, I took Pittsburgh to make the playoffs. Real, if it was eleven, eleven, Thanks, I'd lay a big number on the eleven. But the uh, under ten and a half, taking a dollar forty-five. But ESPN bet, which of course we, we don't have access to, and they throw anyone out with a pulse. Uh, <laughs> ES, ESPN bet is under 11 minus 30. Boy, that Ooh. would be a five-figure bet. If they, I'd be happy to post it if they took it from me. What's the uh, oh. over-under wins for the Niners? Uh, let's see. Now, the Niners will not be up because, well, hold on. Yeah, the, because of the injuries. They're not up. They're, they are not up. Every other team I have, though, I have literally every other team. So, Pittsburgh's next, they're going to Cincinnati. What's that line? Do you know, Jim? Uh, Pittsburgh. Well, right now it's Bengals two and a half. Two and a half. Three at South Point, yeah. I'm taking the Bengals. I, I laid two and a half. It's so did I. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take yeah. the Bengals on that. I haven't yet. Yeah. Pittsburgh not to make the playoffs, though, is my best futures bet so far. I can, can I ask, the, wow. the, what is the line on the Rams Saints next week? I, I, I'm, I'm seeing the Rams two and a half. Is that still accurate? Three at South Point, two and a half. You know, I love the South Point. I, I love it because they don't charge no they don't. They don't move. They're either going to go two and a half minus 10 or three minus 10. They're never going to go minus 20, 30, 40. Michael Gohan wants it that way. Well, however, that makes that my favorite book. I keep a lot of money in that app, and and I have crushed them this season. I mean, totally crushed them. Uh, they have the only three in town uh, on New Orleans plus three. And it's the same thing on all the games. Like, they're the only ones that have, like, a uh, right now, like they're the only ones that will have a three on that Green Bay game. Everyone has three and a half. Everyone. Everyone. They have a three, so there's a reason they have a three. Um, but anyway, so that that's the line on that that game. Well, let me ask you a question on the Rams. Why are, why are they favored at the Saints coming off of last night's game? Obviously, their offensive line is crap. Uh, they can't keep Stafford standing up, and and the Saints are playing. I mean, they got to travel across country to play this team. It's a little bit more rested. Why? Why are they, I, mean, I don't? I don't get the line. I don't understand why they'd be a three-point favorite on the road at that spot. It doesn't make sense to me. Remember the Saints came out two and zero this year. They beat Dallas forty-four to nineteen in Dallas. Everyone said we didn't realize what fraud Dallas was. So I don't think much of the Saints. I really don't. Now I'm not betting the Saints in this game, or I'm not betting the Rams in this game. Either one. I'm just saying I don't think much. Yet last night someone called me a sharp guy that I know. He said, "Oh, this might be a good opportunity to bet the Rams." For the playoffs last night before the game, and I didn't bite on it. Um, but you know, you, you you have valid points though. So you, you think the uh, you're you're saying that the Rams should be a, a under under a, a bigger favorite? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't think the Rams should oh, the be favored. Way. I don't right. think the Rams right. should be favored at all. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're saying. I mean, that. it's obviously their offensive line is crap. Right. And Stafford's an older quarterback without with not a lot of mobility. And a lot of the games that the Saints lost and looked bad in, Carr was out. The only three in the country, South Point. There you go. I'm th- <laughs> I'd Minus take, one time. I would take the three. The only three. Two and a half everywhere, three dogs, I, 20 I don't, everywhere. I don't get why they're favored. Huh. You know what you're going to need for that to watch these games is cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the new cocktail menu here. Oh, nice. Check out these, these, these drinks. You ready? Rudolph's Red Rocket. First off, the name... You gotta love it. Absolute vodka, cranberry juice, ginger beer, prosecco, and candy ginger. Those those sound good. Or mistletoe misdemeanor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now we're talking <laughs> mistletoe misdemeanor. Crown Royal bitters, sugar, and blood orange oh, liqueur. Oh. The mistletoe misdemeanor. Oh, I'm in for that one. I, I'm sure. I don't know. I've never had Crown Royal. I don't, I don't think that's <laughs> you have a couple mistletoe misdemeanors, and that Ram Saints game is going to look a lot better and different than it does right now. Hey, I have a question. What, <laughs> why are you so blown away at this? Let's be honest. Two and a half. Who really cares who's giving who three points and the Rams know it? Because honestly, we're, the Rams are a better team in, in a weird way, even though they're on the road, I understand. But I'm just, I'm just kind of laughing here by I think, myself. I think, like I think, you, I, I you think find this mind blowing. I think it's a, it's, I think it's a bad line, and I'm getting value yeah. with the home dog, and that's, it's, it it's, 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 guess, it's yeah. an obvious bet. It a lot of times I just bet numbers. I mean, I look at the game. I don't see the Rams being the favorite. I just, I would love to meet somebody think, who's I, got an argument this game. I want to meet somebody who's got an argument that says, "Well, I, here, I, let me tell you something about." I want to make a parlay bet right now. The Rams and the Niners don't make the playoffs. Uh, I don't know. Either one. Nice. Either one. Yeah. What's that odds? What do I get on that? Throw in Pittsburgh. 
Yeah. Let me get a three teamer. Put Pittsburgh in on that and one. That'll be astronomical. People oh, really think wow. a lot about Pittsburgh. People, wow. people mm -hmm. think Pittsburgh. You know, they just think so much about Pittsburgh. I mean, uh, you're talking to someone who had under in that game. I had a sick number. Oh, they I, lost a clean. I was back east. I had under 39. Oh, right. I had under 39. It was 36, 35 oh, and a half yeah. for a hair. To score that many points in the fourth quarter of a play. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Ray, let me ask you a question again that's got me intrigued by two teams that I cannot figure out this year, and that's the Cardinals at the Vikings. Vikings laying three. These these two teams have me this year. Every time I think I've got it figured out, I don't. Yeah, I think uh, they're going to be tired, and it's going to be uh, – It's some teams have the keys for other teams, like we talked about, like uh, San Francisco Cardinals. from a sideline to sideline. I like the Cardinals in this game. I, so do I. It's four. I like the Cardinals. This four. Is this, yeah. this is the perfect spot. It it is. They're going indoors. And they, they're going indoors. They're they, not going to be affected by any weather yeah. out there. It would just it, – I mean, after what I saw from Minnesota too, yeah, they're tough. Yeah. They're tough, but I just think there's, this might be a finesse game. I think Zona goes. I think I think they get it done. Crack, you're out there. Would you like this game? I would say uh, there's, there's a four at Chris, three and a half. A lot of other shops. A couple of fours popping up now. You like Zona too? I, I I'm not betting Minnesota. Minnesota. You're not betting Minnesota. I mean, okay. I have. I uh, listen. Good. Minnesota is one of my good futures, so I'm I'm happy they get to the playoffs. Happy they went over season wins, but I just think they become a little more. Uh, Exposed. It's a good six, story. Were they six and zero, or five? They were five and zero, or six. Yeah, we were five or six and zero oh yeah. at one time. Yeah, just like Washington. They just kind of, not that they're falling apart. Washington really fell apart. Look at this NFC West. Yeah. With those four teams: Rams, Cardinals, Niners, and who did I miss? Atlanta? Or no, 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 no. Who's six and five? I think. Like I think that that let me see the division. Oh, Seattle. 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 Seattle's, Seattle's, Seattle's really, only really coming around yeah. now. A little yeah. Bit. I mean, yeah. that's it. Those four teams are right there together. They are. They are. They're all there together, but they're still all there together. Yeah, and Seattle's, <laughs> Seattle's going to go, go play your favorite quarterback, Seattle's Aaron Rodgers. Bet. Didn't he get benched? You know, not, no, he didn't get – listen, Seattle, the, the owner is having – I mean, the, the Jets, the owner is having a fight with him back and forth. I don't mean to be taking your space here. Really. No, go. No, no, right. We love it. Grow up Jewish and Italian. We can't help ourselves. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you, I bet this game for one reason last night – because I heard that they that they made part ways even Rogers last night on a really good podcast. I follow this kid from Canada. It's a genius, the kid. Uh, I just can't think of his name now. Anyways, very. I, I only follow really sharp guys. He's a very sharp. You're guy. not talking about Chernoff. Chernoff. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very, very sharp. Very, very sharp. Very sharp. Chernoff. Yes. So he he puts a. By, by the way, anyone should listen to it. every day he's on every day. And the thing now, is, he's a Jet fan. He doesn't speak in our terms. He speaks in tongues. You have to you have to understand. <laughs> no, a lot of them don't. These are the kids that are geniuses, or him, Rufus, those kind of guys. I, I, and they're nice guys. I like them. But let me just let's face it. They're the kids that we picked last for kickball in school. They're the kids that we no, we hung them up by their locker, by the underwear. I'm not. I'm just saying. No, now, I get it. It's a little bit of revenge now. Yeah. Nerds. It's not a big deal. I, I, listen, I like the guys. You should watch them every week. They're great. Yeah. But he said it. He's right. If this gets announced, this game goes to four. Oh. That, that, that he doesn't play. So that Rogers doesn't play. So. Uh, very good advice. I bet it last night. Someone told me that I should bet it today again. I bet it again, but I keep betting at Circa, and Circa keeps moving it down to Pick'em. So, oh, is that Pick'em now? Listen, if it, it's one and a half, it's two and a half at Chris, and Pick minus 15 at Circa. I, I'm just saying. And I, and I bet five figures on it already at Circa. So. Who's the backup quarterback? Um, Nobody knows oh, the name. Oh, it's got to be Ta Taylor? <laughs> Taylor? <laughs> it is Taylor. It's a Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. Well, Tyrod Taylor is better than no, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers right now. Uh, <laughs> At this moment in time, he well, is. Yeah. Is it, is it Aaron Rodgers is probably not going to play football after this year. He may he not play football play. anymore. He may already be done. He already said. I don't think he's going to play anywhere. He said, I'm not playing for the Jets next year. Who's going to pay him? Yeah. 40, San Francisco. 40 million. He, New York Giants. You know, yeah. The Giants could pay him. Good. That's right. Yeah. The Giants could. Yeah. And, and you know what? That puts butts in the stands and the seats. It's actually not. The guy's a 40-year-old player that doesn't work out. He's not Tom Brady. He doesn't yeah, no. think nutritionally no. work out. And, yeah. You know, he, he, every, you know, Tom Brady raised the level. Oh, I'm 45 years old. And I can still play championship football. Not everybody's like yeah. that. No. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if it gets announced that they part ways? What's this do to the the totals? The the total on the game? Yeah. Will it change the total drastically? What's that worth? Yeah, you know, but he, Jim has a really good point there. 
Taylor came into some games last year and had stepped up a couple. Was it last year or the year before? I think it was last year when Rodgers was down. He, he's not bad. I don't know if it'll affect the total as much as you think. It's already down to 41, so it's 41 at Chris, 42, 41 and a half. He's but a better player than he's a better player than than Aaron Rodgers at this stage. Anymore. It opened to 43. I don't know if it'll come down, anymore, but it, it, I can tell you one thing: Seattle will be over a three-point favorite. That's the reason why I, I bet this and. Um, yeah, the pick minus 15, I, I don't get when there's two and a halfs out there. I really don't. So Seattle's a good pick this week. Yeah. Here's, really? the, here's the last game I want to touch on, because I really think this could be a great matchup next Sunday, which is um, the Eagles going into Baltimore. Two top echelon teams. This could be a heavyweight knockdown, drag out, four quarters. We already talked about the Eagles being physical. This could be a really physical knockdown drag out game. Do you like any well, side on this or are you well, staying away? First of all, it's really difficult to analyze it because we, we haven't seen what happens tonight. Correct. I mean this is a this is a very tough you gotta remember something. Baltimore just lost to Pittsburgh. I think it okay. Mm-hmm. Now they have to go out to the West Coast and play a very, very tough team in the Chargers, then fly all the way back. To the East Coast, that's a you know that's that's, that's a lot rough. of travel, and now they're going to go play another tough team. Even though and, and Lamar is what twenty two and one against NFC teams. Yeah, but you also got to remember that the Ravens' defense is way below what we believe the yeah. Ravens used to be as a defensive team. Yeah, this isn't not a Ravens def- style of defense anymore. I yeah, mean, and they give up. They give up a lot of points. They can't hold leads in the fourth quarter if they have the lead. And I think Munkin is the offensive coordinator. And God only knows why you would play when you have Lamar Jackson and Henry in the backfield and only give Henry the ball 13 times to run it. How the hell do you do that? What are you getting paid for? He makes millions of dollars to make that decision. Yeah, well, he, somebody <laughs> needs to ask him to pay them because he's making – that's a terrible decision. He did the same damn thing against Kansas City in the playoffs last year. He forgot to run the ball. It's a running team that they don't run. Is this a game <laughs> – Come is, on. Is this a game you, where you guys have already talked about where Philadelphia just wears them down in the yeah. second half? Well, Philadelphia will game. wear them down. They're going to run, they're run gonna right be through them in that second half. I mean, just on the surface, I would say Philadelphia would kill them. Yeah, I think Lamar Jackson goes over on rushing. But, but I don't know what's going to happen yeah. tonight, so I don't know. I take the three points. Is that you can take three, two and a half, three out there right now? Uh, only certain sports books have it up. Most sports books pretty safe. Pinnacle and Chris do not have a line. Circa has minus two and a half, minus fifteen. Uh, some of the offshore spots have a three, mostly two and a half. This is where this game is going to be where in Baltimore. Baltimore. In Baltimore, yeah. definitely you got to take the little. Have you, you seen what it's crazy Ray? This is you this like is Lamar Ray. Jackson over. He, Ray pointed this out to me last week. He said, "Do you see what Philadelphia does to teams in the second half after they run, run, run? They wear them down physicality wise, and they crush you the second half." Yes. Just first, make one bet. Very Philadelphia good. second half. Just first, bet, bet. First quarter, they're, they're a losing team in yeah, the first quarter. Last absolutely. Year, last two seasons. Yeah, Ray pointed it out. The last two week. worst yeah. first scoring teams played each other last week. Yeah. It was bad. I took that third quarter last night, correct? Fez just texted me. It's funny, you guys just said, like, almost like you're reading my phone. <laughs> yeah. And Fez just texted me. If, he goes, find out of the best yards on Lamar Jackson tonight, rushing yards. Bet Wasn't over. it 44 and a half? Bet over. That's just funny you guys just said yeah. it. Yeah. He's asking me to bet over. Yeah, <laughs> uh, 44 yeah. and a half. You said, you said you don't play in-game live too much. Only because it, it's too consuming for me. I'd have to know well, more. It is. I'm only betting something where I'm looking to steal. I'm not looking to... He huh. said, he's, Fez no, says something no. on Gil's show a couple of weeks ago. He makes 100 live bets. He bets a lot live. Holy yeah, geez. yeah. You know, there's another thing too. That's wild. Friday, and, and you know, when Fez and I, I, I watch every Friday show too, even if I'm on the road. I don't like betting into the double the juice. So now instead of one ten each way, you're, you're talking one fifteen. Guess what? There's a couple of places out there. They should just use a mask and gun. They're one twenty each way. <laughs> one twenty each way. How do you overcome that? How does a pro beat that? You know, uh, this live wagering, they charge you so much more. They really do. They just hit you right on top of the head. For, you know. Um, well, I want to I give a, some credit here. I know we're, we talk about the NFL, but I think this is worth mentioning. On the college side, our local UNLV Rebels are the highest rank they've ever been at 21. 
Now they have the inside track that Colorado State got beat by Fresno State on Saturday. They beat Nevada, which is the in-state rival who's like 0-5 or 0-6 in the conference. It's here at Allegiant. They win that game. Now they're in the Mountain West Championship for a second year in a row against Boise State, except this year it'll be up in Boise. I think you got to give credit. We haven't shouted out about UNLV. They're a great football team and a fun team to watch. I think they steamroll Nevada because I think they know what's on the line this weekend. And I, I really like their chances to go to, to Boise because they, they got a chip on their shoulder. I just, do you watch the Rebels at all? I watch the Rebels here. I watch college football. Um, I'm not big on the Mountain West, except obviously with Boise State and everything, uh, the, the running back and all that. But I'll tell you what, it could be a steamroll. You don't, you do think that? I mean, it's, it's an in-state rival for the Fremont Cannon. Yes, we all know right. that. They're, they're a head and shoulders team above Nevada. Like beyond, right? Uh, the spread's 18, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you like go, beyond. 18. And on top of that, Barry Odom's not going to let them look past this. He's going to make sure this game is taken care of. The coaching staff does a great job of getting these guys focused in every single week. They don't take anybody lightly. And I, I know from an inside source that they're looking to put this game away early and put the throttle down because they want to get to Boise. So what's the first half? First half play, right. First, yeah, yeah, we can't tell half. score fetters that. We're going to want to know you got an inside source. And, yeah, right. Let me tell you something. We, we, this, this town has been given a gift by having someone like Barry Odom. Uh, agreed. Absolute gift. When I heard he was here last season, I tried to get him. This season, I got to him. He came on my podcast. I was on talking to him for like 15 minutes with the captain of the team. I love this team. You know, I, yes. I didn't want to get him in no trouble. But you know me being a sports fan, he didn't know how much of a sports better I was. <laughs> but I want to say to him, Barry, listen, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> um, you guys, are you going to win more than seven games this year? I'm just asking for someone. It was seven over under. Whew, he knew. And now they could go 10-2, and two, which would be the first time they won 10 games in a regular season. Man, they're, they, they're, I'm, they, I mean, I, and he's such a nice man, too. You know, Barry I, Odom's such a good guy. His pedigree, where he came from, forget it. I can't even believe you want to be has this. Here's the thing when I hope, Crack. The big power schools are going to come after him, obviously. Yes. But now that UNLV just got something like $25 million from the Mountain West to stay in the conference, right, yeah. they got money to pay him. And they need to use the money to pay to keep Odom here. Yeah, they gave him like $5 million. Well, what are you going to do when Michigan's giving quarterbacks $11 million? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Getting... I hope they keep him around because he's done great for this. But I'm excited for this weekend. I'm excited for UNLV for this town. Football's never been a big sport for us, and now it's here. And so big. Everybody needs to keep rallying around. This team's fun to watch. I mean, they got pieces all over the field. They can score in the go-go offense. They can score at you in a hurry. And if you haven't seen Woodard play on a linebacker position for defense, he's worth the price of admission just to watch him play. What about what about White as wide receiver? He could be the first first-round pick you know he's ever had. I mean, this this kid finds ways to get free, makes catches. He gets upfield in the yardage. I, I, they're fun to watch. I mean, they're really a fun team to watch. First half minus nine and a half, it sounds like. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, yeah. any last thoughts for our Thanksgiving trio games this week? I mean, you know, just have some fun. Start looking at the props. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, love Green Bay. Um, love them this week. Um, love the two-team but the three-team parlay, might as well have some fun this Thanksgiving. Detroit, oh, the Lions, and then tonight, I know you hate it, Crack. I know you hate the parlays, but it's Thanksgiving. you got to have a little fun. I mean, here and there, a little spring. You can throw a peanut on it and have fun, but don't give oh, Let's just right not now. forget that we have two-week <laughs> secondaries tonight, especially Baltimore, so look for some props. Tonight. I have leaks, too, though. I'll interrupt you guys. I have a leak. I'll tell you the leak I, ha I just had. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. No, Crack leak. But, no, I mean, besides Stromboli, I do have a leak. <laughs> uh, I, I have a leak here. My leak is that I couldn't stand sitting here with my live odd screen and seeing Circa not move off the one. I had to go bet it again just so they moved to 125. Green Bay? I feel better and I bet another another good amount on, on Green, Green Bay. Bay. And South Point's now three and a half. Now, I don't know what I'll do with that money because I have too much on the South game. Now. You finally so, moved it. Yeah, I moved <laughs> it. Well, I couldn't stand <laughs> it. The wind, the wind moved it. Breakfast to half moved a point. When we were at breakfast, yeah. the wind moved to half a point. The wind did, but... I hey, saw it with my own two Ray, lines. You lost, you lost your turkey leg. Goes to crack and I, I just moved so. two lines. Give him the turkey leg this year. This year. And <laughs> also Detroit <laughs> moved to 11. Just all you guys know. All You're going to get the other turkey leg. What, what's your thoughts for this, this week's games? Money line parlay, just for fun. Uh, you know, I think you bet about 50 bucks, you win about 110 or so like that. Money line parlay. Lions, Cowboys, and Packers. Love it. And if you want to throw in a fourth thing with it, bet the Lions and Bears over. 
All right, you heard it from these guys first. He is Ray Larka. He that's a, is Jim Fleiss. That's, that's a turkey day feast right there. The guy on the other side of the camera has been talking is Bill Krakenberger. He's been on the show a couple of times. Be back on. Always check out Crack Wayne's. My name is Tommy Canelli. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you back on Thursday here at Dom DeMarco's on December 5th at noon. Good luck on your bets. Thank you.